Lydia Thorpe's erratic outbursts have become a fixture of the Australian Parliament. The aggressive style she uses to push her message about the plight of Indigenous people has put many of her colleagues and the Australian public offside. Sky News All-Stars Andrew Bolt, Paul Murray and Carolyn DeRusso reveal the moments that compelled Australia to turn its back on Lydia Thorpe. Lydia Thorpe was initially seen as a passionate representative of Indigenous people in Australia's parliament. Her colleagues and supporters appreciated her advocacy for minorities and her crusade to stand up for the needs of First Nations people. However, over recent times, her advocacy has turned downright bizarre. It's become clear that Lydia Thorpe likes to attract attention through outbursts in Parliament. Best There's still police. To improve the situation police are police across the Doesn't matter what colour you are. Not just police in are police. Alice Springs. Shame on you. No, shame, shame on you. Shame on you. You're the one who brings disgrace. They're the ones killing our you people. You bring disgrace not you only to You tell that to Yindamu. You are the disgrace. You tell that to Kuma J. Walker's family. How dare you? Tell that to Kuma J. Walker's family. You're a disgrace. Concrete slab. And you're Concrete a disgrace slab. to your people. Okay. And yeah, I wore my gammon t-shirt. Uh, Senator Thorpe, please resume your seat. I asked you respectfully, in fact, I ordered you to cover your shirt because any slogans that can be read by me are inappropriate. So please don't also then refer to it. Is that racism? Is that racism? Can I just call out racism in this chamber right now, please? Chair, President, call it out. And recently, she's doubled down and taken her outburst to the streets. Revealed by Sky News All-Star, Andrew Bolt. Lydia Thorpe became the first federal politician I can think of to be banned for life even by a strip club, a stripper's club. For being abusive and racist? I mean, how long, how low can a politician go? Now, Thorpe was at this strip club on Saturday night <laughs> for some party, and the management says she was going around telling white men that they were on stolen land. Now, I should say that Thorpe has a white father herself, doesn't matter. When it, she left the club around 3 a.m., it got even nastier. You know what I say? You know what I say yeah. to you? Yeah. You know what I say to you? Yeah. And you? You're you a racist. Penis. Oh, you are the racist. All I want to say to the black brothers there, and anyone that we're fighting, any black man that stands with a white little like that, you can all get too. Now this strip club seems to have higher standards than our federal parliament because it, unlike parliament, has now banned Thorpe on the grounds that apparently considers her a racist. And who could forget that infamous footage of Thorpe dragging an Aboriginal flag through muddy grass on all fours at a protest? Or when she plonked herself in front of a float at Mardi Gras? Sky News All-Star Paul Murray takes a look. Lydia Thorpe yet again finds a way to make everything all about her. The endless protest and counter-protest about women's right to speak made its way to the front of Parliament House today, where a microphone was set up in the pouring rain for women to speak about women's issues. This instantly set off a counter-protest, and then, of course, there's the moment when Lydia Thorpe decided to join. Now, she didn't come from the counter-protest, she came from the building behind, where, of course, she is an Australian senator for the next five and a bit years, guaranteed $1.2 million. She tried to make her way towards the microphone because the people had a permit. Police pushed her back and you've seen the rest of it all day long. It will be studied like the Zabruder film about who did what and when and all the rest of it. And then of course, she says that she was pummeled by police as she was forced to crawl away. But it is part of a just wider, let's say, um, unluckiness of Lydia Thorpe, because she always makes it about her. Today, a day when the Indigenous issues were being discussed by the voice to parliament question, well, what was the pictures that were everywhere? That was the pictures. When it was the Mardi Gras at the height of World Pride events in Sydney, guess who made it all about them? 
Lydia Thorpe, who of course jumped in front of the wrong float trying to stop the police, but ended up stopping older supporters of the gay and lesbian community. Lydia Thorpe is a staunch opponent of the voice to parliament, arguing the voice will do nothing to help Indigenous Australians. Instead, she's demanding a treaty. Her outspoken views on the issue has won her a lot of enemies in the Labor Party. Now for Thorpe, the problem with Labor's plan for a kind of Aboriginal only parliament called The Voice, it's not that it goes too far, it doesn't go far enough. And she reckons the Greens are sellouts for backing it. So she will now become the leader of a, a new front in the so-called reconciliation movement. The demand is now being raised from how about this voice, advisory kind of parliament, to a treaty and to sovereignty. Now Thorpe has actually done us a favour by making clear what Labor won't, because it's scared of frightening you, I guess. Labor's voice to parliament is a con. Now Labor's going around saying, look, don't worry, you know, vote for this voice in the referendum later this year, vote for it, because it's really harmless, you know, it's going to have no power. It's uh, just there to advise. And I say a con. Many are saying she is the cause of division within the voice debate. Every moment she says, vote no, but if you vote no, you're racist. Like that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> she, makes, she makes the constant point that we are racist and that we owe people money and that reparations should be a thing. But what she's doing is she's really, she's the one who's causing, causing the divide. She's saying this referendum is causing the divide, but comments like Lydia Thorpe's are what drive a divide between most people. Because let me tell you, I don't want to engage with someone who constantly tells me I'm racist. I'm not racist. I care about our First Nations people. I would do whatever you think is best. And if, if voting yes is something that you all can agree on, then I would do it. But I think what she does is she drives a wedge between everyone here and I, I'm just getting sick of it and I think you know you know if she is so sick of representing Parliament and being part of the white man problem, leave, just leave. And it's not only her colleagues and the public who Lydia Thorpe has created tension with. Her own father has come out to publicly denounce her behaviour. The way I see it, the way she is and the way she's changed over the years is that uh, I think she's a very racist person against white people. And uh, uh, she doesn't acknowledge any of her white side. So, yeah, I'm a bit disappointed in her, the way she's been carrying on lately because uh, after all she has got uh, English background as well as Irish, um, a convict side of the English. Um, so yeah, the way she's carrying on, I don't know, she's been uh, probably I don't know, used by someone or some people, but normally she never used to be like that. Maybe it's the power going to her head too. Lydia Thorpe has also been slammed for criticising the monarchy, calling the Queen a coloniser immediately after her death and then demanding an apology and reparations from King Charles, says Sky News All-Star Carolyn DeRusso. Lydia Thorpe, our favourite oh. senator, she's joined an international push to demand an apology from King Charles. She signed this open letter from a lot of Indigenous groups saying that they want King Charles III to make a formal apology and begin a process of repairing the damage of colonisation, including returning the stolen wealth that has been taken from our people. There you go. Should she take that letter to, uh, to the coronation, perhaps? Was no, it? probs not. And what's Charles apologising for? Does she, does she maybe not realise that at the time that Australia well, the first fleet arrived in Australia. We actually weren't an absolute monarchy. There was a parliament. Maybe take it up with the family of Pitt the Younger. That's probably <laughs> that's probably a more important. But like, why are we having this conversation? It's pointless. It's looking backwards. It is just the same dysfunctional, greasy pole of victimhood we've come to know and love. You've embarrassed me now, Caroline. Sorry, because you're right, isn't she? Andrew Bolt has exposed Lydia Thorpe's hypocrisy, revealing the alleged savagery inflicted by her own tribe. Peace and harmony. Well, in fact, as I've now been reminded, Thorpe's old tribe was itself guilty of massacres. Here is Thorpe identifying herself as a member of the Gunai clan of Gippsland. I'm a Gunai Gunichamara and Japarung woman. In fact, the Gunai, also known as Kunai, were guilty of one of the worst massacres of Aborigines known to early colonialists. 
There's even a page devoted to it on Wikipedia giving sources. The Warrawin Massacre, it's called Warrawin or Place of Sorrow. And historian Marie Hansen Fells has also written about it. Now, a key source of what we know about this massacre is William Thomas, the Assistant Protector of Aborigines of Port Phillip, who was the colony at Melbourne. Uh, in letters, he reported claims of locals as 77 people of the local Bunurong tribe had been killed by the Gunai in a dawn raid at Brighton, the beachside area of Melbourne. And four years later, George Augustus Robinson, the famous Chief Protector of Aborigines, said Aborigines in Gippsland told him 70 Bunurong had been killed. Now, the site of this massacre is believed to be one or both these adjacent parks in Brighton, Landcox Park and Burlingham Park. And maybe a monument to this massacre should be put up there, don't you think? But the question now is, will Lydia Thorpe apologise for that massacre of Aborigines by her old tribe? Will she pay reparations? Or are massacres of Aborigines only bad if they were done by whites? Sky News All-Star Joe Hildebrand says Lydia Thorpe's theatrics are all a desperate attempt to remain relevant. It's all part of the form. I mean, Lydia's almost backed herself. Senator Thorpe, I should say. Please. Let's give her the respect she deserves. Um, has pretty much backed her into... <laughs> I mean, she does it for everyone else, doesn't she? Um, has pretty much backed herself into a corner where she has to keep getting more and more hysterical, more and more extreme, more and more outrageous, because otherwise it would just be a long, slow decline.